Hi guys, how are you all doing out there? We're still more of the same at the moment, isn't it? And uh, we're waiting to hear what Boris says on Monday. But in the meantime, I've, uh, I've been thinking a lot about what God might be saying through this time. And um, I guess one of the things I'm really missing the most is getting together and worshipping together and singing and coming into God's presence. And particularly now that we've um, we've decorated the church and it's got that beautiful wall hanging of people just worshipping God, uh, which is so inspirational. Whenever you just stand in front of it, you want to just worship God and give him everything. And so this week, as I was travelling down to Kent, um, I listened to a podcast by Alan Scott, who is uh, the leader at uh, Vineyard in Anaheim in California. And he uh, is teaching his church through Joshua and he gave us gave a different perspective on worshipping because equally in America, they're not allowed to sing in their churches either. And so he took a passage from um, Joshua, uh, Joshua 6. Do you remember where, the, where the, he asked, uh, God asked them to walk around the walls and uh, for seven days and then eventually they crumble and then they can take Jericho? Let me just read a bit of it. I won't read every verse, but it starts at six. Um, and I'll just pick a few out until verse 10. So it says, God spoke to Joshua. Look sharp now. I've already given Jericho to you along with its king and its elite forces. Here's what you are to do. March around the city, all your soldiers. Circle the city once. Repeat this for six days. Have seven priests carry seven ram's horn trumpets in front of the chest. And on the seventh day, march around the city seven times, the priests blowing away on their trumpets, and then a long blast on the ram's horn. When you hear that, all the people are to shout at the top of their lungs. The city wall will collapse at once, and all the people are to enter, every man straight on in. And then we go to, to verse 10, which says, Joshua had given orders to the people. Don't shout. In fact... Don't even speak, not so much as a whisper, until you hear me say, shout, then shout away. And so Alan Scott goes on to talk about um, when we're silent, we can hear God better and see God and where he's at work and we can feel his presence. And so... You know, I don't know about you, but I often have those quiet times with God. Um, and it's usually quiet. Sometimes I put on worship music, but most of the time it's quiet. And I sit and I just reflect and uh, let my mind, you know, go along with God. And, um, and what Alan Scott was saying is that which we do privately in our own home, could we not do it corporately together? Uh, be in silence together in church and just wait on God and see what he has to say. So that felt pretty challenging and I wondered if we could do that. I wondered how that would be, that we would just sit and wait on God and, and wait and wait and wait in silence. Um, we could perhaps stand and worship and put our hands in the air and say, Lord, come, but we couldn't sing but we could wait and see what he says. Uh, and he, he also talks about the fact that in the past, I don't know about you, but when we've been to conferences and things, we all, you know, at the end, the, um, the, the speaker often says, right, you know, we feel that God's calling us to, um, you know, come forward and we'll pray about that. And so we all rush forward and it's all crazy and, and, uh, and people lay hands on you and, and say words over you, which is terrific. But Alan Scott was saying, I wonder what would happen if it was silent and actually we waited and we didn't rush and actually we waited to see what God did have to say. And it isn't all, you know, a big scramble at the front of the church. So he was challenging us to think things differently. And then he talked about the fact that how about we wait for him first and soak him in when we first get into church. Just soak in his presence together. And so 
in the past, you know, in history time, and actually only 20 years ago, I remember when Kevin was at Bible college, we used to have times of silence where we just waited on him in complete silence. Sometimes it was very difficult and he thought, oh gosh, I need to do so-and-so, or I've got to be so-and-so, I've got to pick the kids up or something like that. But actually sometimes you'd sit there in silence and you'd really meet with God and there would be real breakthrough. So in those times, it was so joyful, I loved it. I think sometimes, you know, in the past, we, we, we just get used to the same old, same old church as well, don't we? You know, we come into church and, and we worship with similar songs and it's the same format and, you know, maybe, you know, somebody will say a word, it's often the same person and, you know, all those things. And I think our expectancy is low and we don't bring we don't bring in um, our offering in the same because we're not expecting anything's going to be any different. It's just church on Sunday. So I think this break in uh, not going to church and not being in a church and it's so different will give us a new expectancy and, um, and, a, and maybe experience a new mystery of God. Because if we keep on bringing the same old, we're not going to see God. And I don't know about you, but I really want to see what he has to say. I want to know what God is doing because we're never going to be the same since COVID. We'll have all changed um, anyway. And life will have changed. So naturally, God will use this opportunity for things to change. I mean, in church at the moment, I think when we're open again, we can still stand and, and we can dance if we like, but we just can't sing. We can hum and we can probably sing quietly behind a mask, but we can't really ferociously worship God, can we? Um, so I think maybe God is saying, so just worship me in silence. Just put me first. Um, I was thinking back when I was looking at this, um, back to soaking. And it was something that we used to do back in, well, probably about 10, 15 years ago. It was really, I guess the, the Holy Spirit was teaching us all about it. And it was a time where we just go, we went to a conference in Bath and um, we were encouraged to just lay on the floor or lay anywhere comfortable that you could. And uh, there would be some quiet music in the background. And we, you would just lay there and wait for the Holy Spirit to come and for God to come and speak to you. And it was so relaxing and amazing and such a peace would fall over you. And uh, sometimes you'd cry and sometimes you'd weep. Sometimes God would give you a burden to pray for somebody. Or you would just lay there and really feel the presence of God. It was such an exciting time. And I, uh, and I realised that actually I've got so busy with everything. And so, and actually social media is one of the biggest distractions. Um, that actually I don't make time to just have that soaking with God. And last year when we went to uh, New Wine Leaders, um, Carol and John Arnott were speaking there and that is that one of their things, that soaking in God's presence is the key bit. And I think I might have mentioned this book to you recent, uh, last year, but this book by Carol Arnott and John Arnott is Preparing for Glory. is such a good book to get and read because it's about coming into God's presence. It's about spending time with him and waiting on him and waiting for him to come and if we can do that at home then we can do that together corporately and it doesn't have to be with a loud band playing with drum beats and everything and loud worship music it can be in the silence um so let's think about that corporately waiting on god together hearing from him and having an encounter together I don't know about you, but I don't want to miss what God's going to do next because it's bound to be different because God always does something new. He never does the same. So um, I think as soon as church is open, we all need to come with a an expectant heart of maybe doing something new and something different and maybe start asking God what that might be. Um, maybe one week we could learn dancing to the Lord. 
I know probably half of you are cringing at that point and saying, oh no, not dance. But you know, Helen showed us, didn't she, how to um, paint and, and the prophetic around that painting. And wasn't that incredible? You painted that, I wasn't actually there that week, but that beautiful picture that we've taken the wall hanging from. Um, so painting can be amazing. So we could just have paper around and people could draw things of what God is saying prophetically. And then maybe we could pray corporately, you know, with intercession. We could have a, a, a time of just really praying together um, in the room, but maybe in silence. And then writing things down and drawing things as God gives us words and pictures. There are so many different ways we can do things. And maybe, maybe we've got stuck in doing things the same and, and we've forgotten to actually look for, to see where God is. So, you know, we could either <clears throat> look at this COVID uh, restriction on singing uh, as a negative and get really frustrated and that is what the enemy would love. Or we could say, okay, Lord, we've got this opportunity. What do you want to show us? How are we gonna do it differently? And I think that's a much better way because we don't wanna give in to the enemy, do we? And you know, a bit like in Joshua, where they had to blow the trumpet and the walls fell, it's like an act of physical obedience, isn't it? Here I am in silence, Lord. Here I am standing here, worshipping you in silence, seeking you, and you can, but you can make the walls fall. And Alan Scott in his talk mentioned that um, Jesus was silent as he went to the cross. He didn't say a word, did he? But behind the scenes, uh, that silence brought such a violence that the whole of heaven broke out on earth. And that's when the you know the earthquake came and the and the and it and the curtain split in two. But Jesus didn't say anything at that point. There's power in silence. And I think that that Jesus, um, the Holy Spirit, wants to manifest His glory on His people. And as we approach the throne in silence. There could be amazing breakthroughs in our life. And it's something new, isn't it? Something that we haven't done for a long time. I mean, in the past, people were silent. But I think we've got a bit carried away with sometimes with loud bands and new songs. And they're fantastic. And don't get me wrong, I love them. But I think maybe this is a time to look at the silence as well and really hear what God's saying. Because sometimes I think we can get so preoccupied with the singing and getting the song right that maybe we forget to just hear what God might be saying. It's difficult sometimes to lose yourself when you feel you've got to sing. But Joshua didn't do anything. He was, God told him just to be silent. And as he marched around that wall seven times, um, the walls just collapsed and he was able to claim that territory. And just think, just think if we, we worshipped God uh, regularly in silence or you know, just praying or coming together and drawing in silence. Just think how how God could actually take the territory of South Hornchurch and just give us breakthrough and it could become ours and, it, and for us to, to move into and uh, tell people about Jesus. I think God definitely has something for us here, but it's going to be very different. And um, oh, uh, Alan Scott tells us, uh, talks about in his thing that uh, if you have an Alexa, you know, in your house, you just say, Alexa, uh, turn the music down or Alexa, could you order me something from, you know, Amazon? And uh, he says that, you know, you just, what you, you make that, you make that commandment and then you stand and you wait and it's done. And then before you know it, your order comes or it, it goes, uh, the, the music turns down. And, it's, and then he relates that to heaven and he says it's a bit like a declaration when you stand firm and you say, Lord, we just claim South Hornchurch for you. And we do that with all our heart and we stand there in silence. We say, yes, Lord. And we wait. And God does that. So the goal of walking around the wall is to possess the land. And that's what we need to do here, isn't it? Possess the land for those people who don't know Jesus. 
and I know it was only seven days um, for Joshua and Jericho and uh, we've been doing it a lot longer than seven days in fact nearly a year and I guess it will be a year by the time we really get back to normal but it's a period in time and I think it's a time when God really wants to show us how to just wait on him all of us every one of us not just you know, people at the front or people speaking, every single one of us to wait on him and hear what he's saying. And so I want to encourage you this week to really just um, spend some time waiting on him. Just waiting. And you know, your mind will wander, but that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Just wait. Just wait. And God will speak to, to every one of us because he wants to communicate with us. And maybe if we start getting into that pattern of waiting, then we will um, be able to, we'll be so you know used to it that we'll be able to come and do it together corporately when church opens, which hopefully won't be too long. So I just want to, I just want to pray actually, before we go, that you will really experience something of God. So Holy Spirit, I just ask that you would come and you would just meet with every single person as they sit down to wait on you, as they take time out of busyness, and as they sit and they stop and they come to you, Lord, that you would meet with every single one of them in a new way, that you would set the captives free that you would heal illnesses. That you, Lord, would be there in the silence. Amen. Well, I hope you have a great week and uh, dog walking on Sunday. Um, and hopefully by next week, we will have some idea of when we're going to open the church and we can actually meet again. Bless you all. Bye.